Retention and recruitment are uh, primary issues because without the nurses, that leaves fewer nurses to take care of the veterans. When there are fewer nurses, that increases your workload tremendously. All righty, folks, welcome back to the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison. My co-host is Adam Keller. And on the line, we've got Jennifer Giles, a nurse practitioner. She works with veterans down in Tuscaloosa, and she is a member of the National Nurses Union. She's going to be talking to us about uh, some issues at the VA down in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Jennifer, thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So talk to us about what the nurses do at the Tuscaloosa VA. You know, I, uh, the National Nurses Union, uh, they represent nurses down at the Tuscaloosa VA and at VAs across the country. What are some of the jobs that y'all uh, that, that those nurses do for veterans down there? So we have um, several different areas. We have uh, mental health where we take care of patients with um, acute medical, complex medical and psychiatric issues. We also have uh, geriatrics and it's extended care where we take care of uh, nursing home types of, of veterans, as well as outpatient uh, primary care. We also have outpatient mental health. So we run clinics and we also do um, uh, outpatient care where veterans come in, see the doctor and they go home. And additionally, we have nurses who actually do home based and they go out to see veterans in the home. Oh, I didn't realize that the VA had services like that. Yes, we have home health. We also have telehealth so they can see patients um, through um, um, electronic means. They can see uh, veterans mm-hmm. who are, are not able to come in. They actually have um, telehealth medicine as well. Well, that, that's great. I know that that has uh, that, that was something that my doctor uh, stopped doing at, you know, as the pandemic kind of the public awareness of it or, or the public interest in it kind of wore thin his his interest in doing the telehealth kind of <laughs> kind of wore thin. Uh, so that's great that y'all are still offering that service for veterans. Yes, it proved to be a very valuable tool um, after COVID was upon us. Um, Mm -hmm. It gave us a way to still see veterans um, even through that crisis. Right, right. And how long has the NNU been representing nurses down there? For many years, I'm not able to tell you exactly how many, but I've been there for 11 years and NNU has been there since I've been there. Okay. Wow. That's, that, that's a pretty good bit of time. Um, so, you know, the, the reason that we wanted to talk to you today and is because of some of the issues that, that nurses and, and other uh, VA employees have been having at the VA. And, and you know, I'm a member of AFGE and, and both the NNU and AFGE have been having some issues with the VA for a long time now. And both of the unions have actually staged uh, protests across the country and at that Tuscaloosa facility here in Alabama. Uh, What are some of the issues that uh, that NNU members and that AFGE members are facing down there? Uh, Patient safety concerns. Our our primary concern is um, making sure that we have adequate staff to uh, appropriately see the patients and attend to all of their needs. We've uh, lost a lot of staff. COVID has had an effect on um, uh, many industries and um, the same for nursing, as well as um, conditions that hospital, that administration has uh, contributed to nurses uh, leaving the bedside. So the concerns that we're having are to uh, encourage them to um increase the the flexibility of staffing, increase um, options so that nurses will want to stay 
um, and new nurses will want to come. Re retention and recruitment are uh, primary issues because uh, without the nurses, that leaves uh, fewer nurses to take care of the veterans. When there are fewer nurses, that increases your workload tremendously. Um, and, you know, it, it leads to moral distress and eventually moral injury. So mm -hmm. we are providing options and requesting the needs that the nurses say that they want. And we're asking the administration and management to respond to those requests. And how has the, um, you know, how's the community and, and the patients down there responded to some of these issues? Because, you know, the, the veterans are really, really, um, they're really protective of, of the VA, you know, even it, even amid all of these attacks on the VA by, uh, you know, by corporate politicians, VA uh, veterans still prefer going to VA hospitals um, and veterans still get better outcomes at VA hospitals, even amid all these attacks on on the VA and, and attacks on on that as as a viable career prospect for for people um, coming out of the military. You know, another thing about the VA is that it's one of the largest employers of veterans in this country. Um, so how how are how are veterans and how is the community in Tuscaloosa reacting to some of these issues that y'all are having? Well, you're exactly right. They uh, they do brag on the VA and they do love coming to the VA. And that's because of the hard work that we're putting in. And the reason that we're protesting is because we want to continue that high level of care that we provide. Veterans come to the Tuscaloosa VA from all over the country. Mm. So um, we are doing our very best. And what we're saying is that we need help. We need um, more nurses in here for us to continue to provide the level of care that we provide. We don't want nurses to have to do the, the roles of two or three people. That makes uh, your, job satis your job satisfaction or your ability to satisfy your patients, that decreases your ability to satisfy your patients. You can't attend to all of their needs the way that we have been accustomed to doing and the way mm -hmm. that we strive to do. You can't do that if you're spread so thinly, if you're having to run two or three clinics, whereas you should be running one. Of Those course. types of things lead to less availability to the veterans, and that's less that we can do for them. We're fighting for the veterans. Yeah, of course, of course. And, and you know, you're talking about, you know, it's important that the VA hire more nurses. Um, it, why are they why are they not? What is the, it is? Are, do they have is it is it an issue of nurses just don't want to work at the VA because it's such a difficult job and the pay is so low or do they not even have the job postings out there? I think it's a combination of things. Um, I think it is a combination of, of postings not being done timely enough, um, as well as um, when a nurse is required uh, searching for an employer, of course, they're going to weigh the benefits as well as salary. Mm -hmm. So if you are weighing your options, most likely you wouldn't go to the lowest paying employer. Uh, you're going to look for the best benefit package. So um, we're asking for the VA to consider those things and make sure that we are competitive. You have to be competitive with your uh, other facilities and other employers if you want to gain and attract. And we also, we want to attract the best. Mm. So we have to have packages that are available and working conditions that are in conducive to retaining those trained skilled nurses that we already have. And we also want to attract the best to come in to work with us. Of course. And and you would think that that's something that, uh, you know, that, that veteran veteran loving politicians could agree on, you know, uh, on a bipartisan basis. You would think that this would be, uh, you know, wham, bam, really quick type of thing. You would think so. Um, unfortunately, sometimes, you know, it seems that maybe budgets get put ahead of um nursing. So um, that is something that they will have to reconsider because nursing is crucial to taking care of veterans. And we need enough of them on staff to provide the excellent level of care and the skilled nursing that um, only the VA can provide. Mm -hmm. And and these, these aren't, obviously, these aren't issues that are just affecting 
Tuscaloosa nurses. This is a nationwide problem at VA facilities. Is that right? That is correct. Um, why, why is it th- then, does, does management at the local level have the budget or is it that there is, there's not the budget from, uh, you know, from the national level? management would have to explain the budget. I cannot Mm -hmm. explain that. However, I do know that under certain conditions, as such as uh, hard to fill uh, positions where you have positions that have been vacant for extended periods of time, or if you have positions where you need uh, several people um, in a, a timely fashion, you don't have them. When you're in a crisis, there are means of meeting those needs. So we're asking for our administration and our vision director, Dr. Walker, to make sure that every recruitment and incentive available is being utilized in order to attract nurses to come and also to retain the ones that we have. So budget may be a factor, but there are ways around that. There are incentives that the mm-hmm. BHA handbook describes. Absolutely. So uh, is there anything that folks that are listening to this now can do to help y'all um, push management at, and the administ- management at the VA and the administration to do the right thing about this? Absolutely. They can uh, visit our website, nationalnursesunited.org slash Veterans Affairs. Um, They can visit that website. There is also a uh, you can write Congress and ask them to support the VA Employee Fairness Act, which gives us um, bargaining rights as well as support us when we petition. When we are protesting outside, you're always welcome to come and join us and um, advocate for the veterans alongside with us. Do y'all have another protest at the Tuscaloosa VA coming up soon? We don't want to have one scheduled as of yet. Well, let us know and uh, we'll, we'll try our best to be there that time. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Jennifer, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Is there anything else that you want to make sure that folks know? Um, Just continue to support us at the VA. We love what we do. We have hardworking, dedicated nurses, and we just, we want our program to grow. We want our VA to grow. We want to be able to provide for more veterans. We've, um, uh, some of our units have been closed because we don't have enough nursing staff. We want those units back open. So continue to encourage our administrators and leaders and Congress to help us so that we can get back uh, back on top where we used to be. Jennifer Giles, uh, nurse practitioner, member of National Nurses United. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.